It's morning news on New Day from the News Hub at Adesawe here in Accra. I am Wendy Lai. Coming up this morning. NDC Chairman Samuel Ofusu Ampofu declines pleas invitation over kidnappings and fire outbreaks in the country. Meanwhile, the CID says it will resource to legal means to compel him to honor the invitation. National Communications Authority shuts down Accra-based radio stations, Radio Gold and Radio XYZ. Students' representative council of University of Ghana threatened series of demonstrations if management fails to dialogue with them on proposed privatization of four of its halls of residence. And on the International Fund, the Reserve Bank of Australia spelled responsibility as responsibility on millions of the new yellow notes. And always remember that we are live on DSTV channel 279. Let's start with our stories now. And the CID says that it will resort to legal means to compel the national chairman of the NDC to honor its invitation. The CID, however, says it will use several means, including resorting to the courts. Meanwhile, the chairman of the National Democratic Congress, Samuel Ofusu Ampofus, has declined a police invitation over some kidnappings and far outbreaks in the country. A letter from his lawyers, Ayeni and Feli, said addressed to the Director General of the Criminal Investigations Department, CID, indicated that the police invitation to their clients was prejudicial to their ongoing trial on the matter of conspiring to cause harm and assault against a public officer, adding that the police invitation is an attempt by the security agencies to shift blame over the inability of security agencies to address what it describes as an increasing state of insecurity in the country. We'll go back to our earlier story where the CID says it will resort to legal means to compel the National Democratic Congress chairman to honor its invitation. Now, the CID, however, says it will use several means, including resorting to the court. There was a letter of invitation signed by Commissioner of Police Director General of CID, uh, Mrs. Mamiyatiwa Adodankwa, inviting the national chairman for the NDC party, Mr. Samuel Lofuswampofo, to report to the CID headquarters today at 2 p.m. for to assist in investigations. Um, as we speak, he didn't come, but we had five lawyers representing him this afternoon who came to the CID headquarters to give us a letter. Um, in the letter, the national chairman has declined to come. The next question I'm sure would be what is the CID going to do in that direction? The CID would resort to legal means to for us to know the next step of action to be taken. We operate in a system where legality is the base and so you don't do anything outside of uh, legal remit. And so yes, when I said or when I did mention that we're going to resort to legal means to know what next action or what next step of action to be taking. I meant to say that we're going to go through the procedure to go um, for us to know the next step of action to, to, to take. I think that we stated clearly in the letter that was signed by the Commissioner CID uh, was just an invitation to him to help assist with investigations. Meanwhile, sources at the CID say both the CID and the national chairman of the NDC together with his lawyers have agreed to resolve the matter. The chairman of the party, Samuel Ofoswampofo, is likely to meet the CID in the early hours of Friday, May 10. 
more on the story. And uh, the party was at a news conference addressed by the vice chairman of the Council of Elders, Alaji Muhammad Idrisu, in Accra, indicated that the move by the CID was another ploy by the ruling MPP to intimidate office of the NDC. A report by Messi Darling Loko. This latest invitation, in our view, is yet another case of intimidation and harassment being employed by the Nana Adodonko Akufado government using the instrumentality of the police to instill fear in our chairman and supporters of our party. The vice chairman of the Council of Elders said the police invitation is also an attempt to divert attention from the insecurity in the country. We dismiss this claim as a sinister fabrication and lie conjured up by the police CID and its director general at the instigation of the Nana Ado government. This has been done to divert attention from the growing lawlessness and violent crimes in our country. He said the CID can go ahead to arrest the party's chairman if he wants to do so. The NDC will not allow him to honor such vexatious invitation. After all, was it not only on Wednesday, September 2015, that Mr. Freddie Blay, then first vice chairman of NPP and now chairman of the party, refused an invitation by the CID to assist in investigations? What did the CID do in the era of the NDC government to him? What did the NDC government itself do to him? If the CID wishes to arrest our national chairman, they can proceed to do so. Away from that story, to education and the Students' Representative Council of the University of Ghana has threatened a series of demonstrations if management fails to dialogue with them within one week over the possible privatization of four of its halls of residence. At a news conference, the council insisted students should not be made to pay for management's inability to service a loan is contracted for the construction of the halls. The university has failed to repay a 43 million city loan facility contracted in 2008. Here's a report by Salom Amenya. The news conference was to put pressure on management and government to avert the possible privatization of the four halls of the university referred to as the Diasporan Hall. This follows the inability of management to repay a 43 million CD loan facility contracted in 2008 for the construction of the halls. The loan has ballooned to 528 million CDs due to interest and other charges over a 10-year period. A court judgment secured by the banks early this year has ordered management of the university to pay up the loan. Upon negotiations, the 528 million CDs was wavered by 50%. The banks want a goodwill amount of 50 million CDs paid before the end of May, but management says it is unable to raise the money. Has all this money been used to fix doors? Has all this money just been used to pay for security personnel? Where are our monies? SRC President Sylvester Usuamako insists students should not be made to pay for management's inability to service the loan. So what we are saying is that government should come in and intervene. We are giving a one-week ultimatum. If we are calling for a roundtable discussion with investing management and government, we are calling on the Ministry of Education, the MP of this constitu constituency, Ayawaso West Wogon, and His Excellency the President, Nana Dodanko Akufuado, so that we step in and resolve the issues. People are standing in the sun and saying we won't pay, and so we will be bold to defend this just cause forever and ever. The four halls, Hilaliman, Alexander Edum Kwapon, Elizabeth Frances Say, and the Jean Nelson Aka 
accommodate about 7,000 students whose fate hung in the balance as to whether they can pay up the new fees that would be charged. It is unclear exactly how much will be charged if the halls are privatized. However, reports suggest that the fees could be in the region of 2,300 cities, which is almost a 100% increment compared to the current 1,345 cities being paid by students. To other developing stories, and the National Communication Authority, NCA, has closed down pro-NDC radio stations, Radio Gold and Radio XYZ. Now, the stations went off air yesterday after staff of NCA and some police officers stormed their premises. The officials of the NCA and the police, according to some staff of Radio Gold, stormed the station at about 2 p.m. Thursday afternoon, demanding its closure. According to a statement from NCA, radio stations operating without valid authorizations as determined by the 2017 FM Broadcasting Audit have been shut down with immediate effect as enforcement action in view of the decision of the Electronic Communications Tribunal. Programs manager of Radio Gold, Richard Japon, however, denied the station had not renewed its license. We've taken all the necessary steps to regularize our authorization with NCA, so and also comply with every directive that comes from GIBA because GIBA is more or less like our mother organization. So, as far as we are aware, we don't know of any infractions with. He expressed surprise the NCE authorities would storm the station with armed police officers when they could have presented the letter and gone ahead with the action. If the NCA wants us to shut down, they should just send us a letter and then we'll comply. But we had heavily armed police officers entering our premises. I was outside the office. When I was coming, I saw a police car parked at our gates. I entered and I saw two police tundra and another vehicle. I mean, something I've not experienced in this office since I joined Radio Gold. So really, something like that, you'll be a little bit terrified, uh, as if we are operating something dangerous in, in our premises here. Because I don't think if you want us to comply with a directive, we need to be in intimidated with that kind of officials who came here today. Hearing that XYZ was also closed down at the time that the station has started a live broadcast of the reaction of the NDC Council of Elders to the police invitation to the party's national chairman, Samuel Fusuampofo, at a news conference at the party's headquarters, Richard Japon said he suspected the action of the NCA was triggered by the government. I've just been informed that XYZ is also off air, so it should tell you a certain kind of state capture that is going on. Workers were seen loitering expressing frustration over the closure. Meanwhile, the National Communications Authority, the NCA, has explained that the shutdown of the two radio stations happened because they failed to comply with the ruling of the Electronic Communications Tribunal, ECT, following a decision by the ECT. In 2018, which reviewed the status of expired FM radio broadcasting authorizations and which ruled, among others, the companies whose authorization had expired reverted to the same position as fresh applicants. Companies affected by the shutdown may submit fresh applications to the authority if they so wish, and such applications shall go through the required procedure for new FM broadcasting authorization while the outcome will be communicated to applicants. We'll bring you more on that developing story in our subsequent bulletins. To other stories now, and the Ghana Police Service has launched a manhunt for three persons suspected to have masterminded the assault of a police sergeant near Ashalaja in the Ga West municipality. 27 others have already been arrested. A report by Peter Kwawadato. The job 
police media operation on Thursday, May 9, was prompted by the Sunday, May 5, assault on a police sergeant at Kokoshe near Ashalaja in the Ganwes municipality. The junior police officer from the police headquarters was reportedly in the community to discuss land-related issues when a group of people attacked him. At least 27 persons were rounded up on Tuesday following a formal complaint to the Amasam and Divisional Police Command. But the police say the ringleaders were on the run. Kojo Danfolo and Kojo Bedu report to the nearest police station in your own interest. And for the people in Asalaja and Amasama areas, the police are poised to work with you to make sure that you go about your duties. Anybody who has legally acquired land there should work with the police to make sure that they develop their properties without any let or hindrance. Another team, including the media, were commanded to the area on Thursday, May 9, on a multiple mission to look for suspects who had escaped arrest, retrieve gadgets taken away from the police officer, and to build confidence in the people. The only people on site were women and children. Shops and homes remained locked. While combing the community, we spotted two men who made a U-turn upon seeing the team. This elderly woman broke down wailing over the arrest of her son, whom she described as the breadwinner. <laughs> The house of the headman of the community, SK Latte, was under lock. He is suspected to have in his possession items taken away from the police sergeant during the assault. Residents, however, pleaded to assist the police locate the suspects. The community will help because the most of the people they have are not the right people. The right people are there. So all the parents are looking forward to get the right people. For the police. The police urged the public to assist them locate those involved in the assault to face justice. Let's do business now. And the Bank of Ghana has warned the general public to desist from the use of any currency other than the city or Pessoa to pay for goods and services in the country or be made to face the law. In a statement, the central bank indicated that although the Foreign Exchange Act 2006 Act 723 prohibits the pricing, advertising, receipt or payment of goods and services in the currencies other than the local currency, it had noticed that some institutions, companies and individuals were dealing in the business of foreign exchange trade without authorization from the bank. Such violations, the statement added, are punishable by law by summary of convictions, a fine up to seven penalty units, or a prison term of not more than 18 months or both. It emphasized that the sole legal tender in Ghana is the city or the Pesos. Let's focus on international news. There's some interesting story. Then the Central Bank of Australia spelled responsibility as responsibility on millions of the new yellow notes. The ARBA confirmed the typo on Thursday and said the error would be fixed in future prints run. But for now, around 46 million of the new notes are in use across the country. The bills were released late last year and feature Edith Cohen, the first female member of the Australian Parliament. Interesting developments there. But that will be all for this morning in relation to the news on your day. But the show continues. I am Wendy Lai. Thanks for watching. It's Friday and uh, we have been deceived <laughs> by another brother who... Um, how do I describe him? Uh, I think um, now I'm worried. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> no, you should be dis <laughs> you should be disturbed. Oh no, I mean, for yeah. Johnny to describe me. Oh. Senior Bright, this one over to you. Oh. Okay. No, 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 I'm sorry. This is the lion's den. No, 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 no I'm sorry. You are entering the lion's den. I'd rather take my blues No, you are entering the lion's den. Let me choose. Excuse me, sir. That's a death warrant. Let me choose my bullet at least. But you know, my weekend started yesterday, so if you start your weekend on Thursday and on Friday you That's meet the likes of Giovanni, then it means that your, your weekend promise will be, be fun. It will be fun. It will be fun. So uh, usually you would know that uh, Bright and I will be here with Dr. Nanama, but Giovanni is joining us this morning. Uh, he has a uh, lot of momo to share. Yes. Today. Yeah, so <laughs> it's a promise he yeah, made before he It's a promise that. he oh, made wow. before we allowed him to come on. <laughs> Giovanni, how are you doing? I'm blessed, my brother. Yeah. Good to have you on yeah. there as well. Do, do you want okay. to preach now? No, Pastor? not today. <laughs> <laughs> not today. Not when Bright has already told me how his week is <laughs> You know, he's been talking about this, my weekend, my yeah. weekend. It on Thursday. Thursday. Yeah, yeah, what happened? I mean, I, I, oh, I no, no, it's a yesterday. tradition. Oh, okay. Yeah, but yesterday, yeah. I think he, he, he seemed to be looking forward into something that, I mean, lips can't speak mm. about, mm. something the public can't know about yeah. yet until yeah. Monday. So yeah. Yeah. we're all looking forward to doing it. You, you know, you need someone to be oh, no, 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 no. One no, of his no, other no, names is a witch catcher. Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah. This weekend, we have a lot to learn. We do a lot of witch catching around Pram Pram. Yes, they go Pram Pram area. Yeah. If you have a witch around your area, oh, yeah. call him. Just when he was interacting with the MP on mm. Wednesday. Yeah. Wednesday. Yeah, good. So you are setting the tone right for a yeah. while before we talk. Uh, don't be worried if you see some of us tagging along. But yeah, great. So welcome good morning. to the show. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All of you out there. It's a fantastic Friday. Yeah. And it means that a lot of excitement this morning. The show promises to be very exciting because Fridays are Fridays. We don't yeah. joke with the Fridays at all. And a lot, a lot, Johnny, when I came in this morning, Joe, I was told mm. if I don't do this birthday dedication, mm -hmm. uh, my weekend will be in a mess. Something like will happen. The weekend. Mm -hmm. The weekend. And the lady is called Abigail Amwaku. Ah, Abigail Amwaku. Mm -hmm. Is it yeah. the same lady who cooked the jollof for us the other time? No, no. Okay. No, Johnny, why are you? Oh, really no, I'm just, oh. I'm just. That's asking. Abigail Amwaku. Oh, no, so this is Amwaku. Amwaku. But that one was Amwaku. They're not related, yeah. but yeah. Yes. Yes. Unfortunately, <laughs> this is from Abigail's husband to be. Oh. Nanaku is in Ah, okay. So he's going to pay money. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, actually. Hard guy. So that means shout out to so you, Abigail, from the groomsmen. Yes. Yeah, yeah, we'll be yeah, there too. We'll be there. Yeah. Yeah, in Ahinu Makoko being in Kumase, uh, yeah. this is from your husband, Abigail. Your husband says, to be, says he yeah. loves you so much. Oh, but this time is not the problem for us. Do, have you ever to told, uh, okay, I, I know you told you. Oh, yeah, I did. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Look, I'm yeah. a lover. Yeah. You mean when, when they were dating yeah. or something yeah. like that? Yeah. Looked into her eyes and told her I love you. Yeah, sometimes yeah. when you look into the eyes mm. for so long, they, they, they feel you're giving them Apollo. <laughs> <laughs> so you stay <laughs> clear. Yeah, so sometimes you don't, you don't want to keep that. It's not something for us. A uh, black man looks in your eyes and says, I, baby, <laughs> you know, I, <laughs> wait for a while, uh, yeah, but the time you are done, you are scratching your eye. <laughs> Apollo. All right. Yesterday, so yesterday, <laughs> I saw uh, you know something on a screenshot on WhatsApp. Mm. Uh, so this guy comes up and uh, WhatsApps a baby. Say, mm -hmm. hey baby, how you doing? The lady says, I'm fine. Uh, I'm not fine. Oh. Then the guy says, oh sorry, you'll be fine. Then the lady says, ah, you want to ask me what's wrong with me? Uh -huh. I say, hey, now come Mumu. I my man. If you start talking about Mumu, what okay. will I do? <laughs> this morning we'll be ranting on uh, the issue of uh, close uh, C. Uh, the sea is so big. I don't know why <laughs> these guys want to close it. Uh, well, sure. what scientifically, kind of, what, what kind of doors are they going to use? Scientifically, they want to close it. Use what, what kind of doors? So uh, they'll close it from here, close it from here, uh, and allow the fishes. To and who, who keeps the keys? Uh, <laughs> who keeps the keys? I don't know, but they want to. I'm sure they want to play a roll run for the fishes. <laughs> okay, yeah, this one on daily run. We'll be talking about the close uh, fish season. What the fishermen are, are thinking and saying. Mm -hmm. If you're happy or not happy, mm -hmm. uh, we hear uh, that is, of course, uh, the commitment to do that and allow the fishes to. <laughs> they, they say they do what? They, they spawn. Yeah, yeah. They, they will do a roar. In, in the local, <laughs> they, they mate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then they reproduce. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That's great. So they will take a look at that. They've been trying day. to do family planning, but we're forcing them to, yeah, not to, to change their minds. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Will it be God's uh, advocate? God said we should come and multiply. multiply yeah, so yeah. Yeah. All right. Of course, the newspapers are ready, and I'm sure you hear of uh, you heard yesterday about the closure of uh, 
uh, the two radio yeah, stations. Two radio stations. Of, of some purpose issue, mm -hmm. uh, government said that they're setting up special security agency. Mm -hmm. We'll take a look at all that. The newspapers are ready. Mm -hmm. And also, Mother's Day is coming. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. is coming. Oh, it's, it's coming. Oh, it's coming. It's arrived. It's, 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 it's just know, arrived. I, I thought you know, it was today. You know, the no, way no, they, no, are, no. they have inundated the airwaves mm -hmm. with Mother's Day conversations mm -hmm. and packages and programs. And you, like you, when you, wake up you were dashing tickets yesterday. Yeah. And I was really? Like, every day. In fact, we started this drive here at Media General, I think, for like two weeks now. Yeah. We started from the very first week. We're like, what's going on, guys? Please. Yeah. What's happening? I think it's not a Mother's Day, it's a Mother's Weekend or Mother's Day. Yeah. Mother's festival yeah. Yeah. from yeah, today, today all the way through Sunday. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So those who have not called their mothers in a long time, yeah. actually putting on social media, oh, mommy, you are the best. Hashtag mm -hmm. Mommy's Bay. Jo, yeah. I'm, I'm sure today the show will be full of uh, uh, mothers' excitement. Mother's I'm telling yeah. you, course. man. Yeah. Quesiata is on the show later. Oh yeah. And, uh, oh yes. yeah. Yeah. Will he come topless? I'm wondering. No, uh, he's the only musician in Ghana who doesn't charge for wardrobe. Okay. Because then, what are you paying for? What are you paying? Yeah, because the guy's going to take off the top anyway. His oh, kids, right. yeah. His so he, suit. so you know when you're when he's charging you 15k for a gig, you can take that 5k off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, no. For the top, you ain't got no top. wardrobe, my yeah, brother. Yeah, like, so like yo, my we, brother. We, we know we, this jeans. We are familiar with it. We'll give you TNT. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, All right. Mm. They they uh, what do you call it? Um, yesterday, I I chanced upon the MPP's. Um, Manifesto. I looked at page 36, mm. and they talked about making the Ghana uh, Hydrology Department mm -hmm. an authority to okay. fight floods mm. and, and all of that. I mean, maybe Fantastic. I, I read. So Fantastic. this was in the 2016 manifesto. Fantastic. Idea. As we speak, we don't have that. And everybody seems to have gone silent about it. So this is what the manifesto said. Um, page 36 under infrastructure. Uh, point number point R it says establishing a national hydrology authority which will be responsible for and shall plan, develop, maintain, protect, and administer drainage, flood control measures, major dams, sea defense measures, including construction of major storm drains to reduce the risk of flooding, constant dredging, and desilting of our waterways and drains to ensure free flow of flood waters. Mm. This was said in 2016. They, we don't have an authority as mm -hmm. of now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the forecast along the Gulf of Guinea, as has been what? mentioned. What is expected? What is expected? <clears throat> we, we are sitting literally on a time bomb and everybody mm. seems silent about it. Mm. Well, everybody. So, good morning you. Mm. Uh, promise made is uh, promise expected and promise that must be fulfilled. Mm. How be, sir? Good morning. Okay. So let me greet this uh, young man in, uh, the, uh, around the Ashanti region, mm. the DC for uh, Kumewu Sector District. Samuel uh, Adai uh, a great young man trying to put the district together. Mm. And uh, he is the one uh, trying to bring up the the Bonfubri and the Wala ah, waterfalls. Okay, yeah. okay, yeah. Charlie, he's talking about yes. He's, he's talking about trying to uh, me put the place. Uh, you, you, uh, yeah. <laughs> we, we tell you about things. Say you, we can. Uh, when so is the weekend? See, see Ghana with Johnny Hughes. So we right. tell him about things. <laughs> okay. Right. When, when the time is up, he decides that he's doing something. We'll, we'll talk about okay. this. Anyway, <laughs> but uh, I'll be off the show. I'm going to Medina this Thank morning. You. The Medina market. We're digging the baller. We're talking decongestion exercise. We're talking 3% of uh, common fund for persons with disability. We're talking about you. So come, come to the Magina yeah, Market. Exactly. Let's have a what chat. Time? What time does that start? 8, 8 a.m. sharp. Right. Okay. I nearly said p.m. We'll be live on uh, radio. Yeah, well, yeah. we'll be live on uh, 3FM 92.7 and on TV3 New Day as well. Patch in here. So uh, just know the difference. Look at my teeth. There's no diastema. Uh, Giovanni, show you also that you know, people don't mislead me for you. There's okay. traffic on your way. <laughs> In a couple of minutes, stay with us. Back to TV3 New Day. A quick reminder, we'll be at Medina this morning for Community Connect. You can't miss it at 8 a.m. Join us. But today is International uh, Lupus Day, or World Lupus Commemorative Day. On the 4th of May, the governor of Ghana, through the Ministry of Health, signed on to the international declaration and said that, well, we will, we will fight this together. This year, we're marking the, uh, uh, we're commemorating the day uh, with a the theme, Lupus Beyond Boundaries. I've been joined on the telephone lines there, Skype phone line by uh, Dr. DSP Faisal uh, Ayambila. He is all the way out there. Doc, good morning. Thank you very much for your time. Good morning, Johnny, and good morning to our cherished viewers. 
we're back at the celebration one more time. And yes. is there anything worth celebrating? Yes, I think there is a lot worth celebrating with regards to this um, condition that is rather common in society mm -hmm. in terms of the fact that now treatment is, um, is readily available for people that suffer the condition. But for our viewers, we all know that um, lupus is actually a condition where, you know, the immune system of the body is supposed to fight off infections, viruses, and all of that. But in this case, the immune system becomes hyperactive and it begins to fight the normal cells and organs of the body. So that's what happens in lupus. Interesting. Yeah. How do people get this condition? Are they born with it? Do they acquire it along life? What is it? <laughs> you know, culturally, this is one of the conditions that people would say is um, um, sun sumiyare or is as a result of spiritual attacks because it's, it's one of those diseases you can't even tell the specific cause. All we know is that your immune system suddenly becomes hyperactive and begins to fight your heart, begins to fight your brain, and gives all sorts of symptoms. But what we know is... is um, nine times more common in women and in, in in about four out of ten cases it would be a black person involved so mm. there seems to be a correlation between being black and okay. being a woman so it's most common in that group um, usually between the ages of 15 to 45 years mm. but it's mostly genetic because okay. uh, we realize that it runs in families mm. and it could also be as a result of certain medications that we take and in some cases, um, some long-standing viral infections can predispose someone to get the lupus attacks. Five million people around the world have this condition. That's alarming, really. Uh, in yes. Ghana, what's our story? In Ghana, uh, sadly, to, uh, I mean, it's sad to note that we don't have the full statistics of the burden with regards mm. to how many patients we have. The main problem with lupus is lupus really looks like it resembles almost any other illness you can find because okay. if it attacks the heart, maybe the doctors may think it's um, a heart problem. If it okay. attacks the brain, we may mm. think it's neurological. So we are unable to quantify the the number of cases we have. But currently, we know that the trends are towards um, point towards a rise in the number of cases. Okay. And luckily, we are able to diagnose more lupus cases in most of the secondary and tertiary facilities in the hospital. Mm. And a good number of our patients have been put on medications. And so I would say there is a lot of hope and there is, it's worth celebrating. Let's talk about the impact lupus has on persons who are affected by it. Uh, first, the psychological bit, and then we can talk about the medical bit. Yes, psychologically, as you can see, Johnny, this is a, a long-term condition. In the sense that once you are diagnosed with it, chances are you have it for life and you are always going to be sick and have all these symptoms from time to time, regardless of how good the medication would be. And so it takes a psychological tool on yourself and people around you must also be sensitized to know that you have this condition you are battling with. Okay. Medically, yeah, medically, there was a time where people diagnosed with lupus would not be given more than five years from the point of diagnosis. But mm. currently, because of the advent of um, good medications, we are able to sustain life to well over 20 to 25 years on average. Mm. And so it's much better now than before. The, the, there's a call, just like uh, we'll have for dialysis, to have lupus on our national health insurance scheme so that yes. persons who are suffering from that or have that condition will have to benefit from the scheme. Is that an opinion you want to agree with? I personally would agree with this. Um, you know, um, um, in, 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 Mexic in medical jargon, we would say that lupus is the disease of a thousand faces because, mm. as I've mentioned earlier, the symptoms vary from any point from head to toe. You could have symptomatology. Right. And so I would say that considering the gravity of the condition, people who suffer this rare genetic condition should mm. be able to, you know, get some of the funding from the NHIS to purchase medications, which are also very expensive. Right. So it's, it's a right call. It's a call in the good direction. Mm. As a nation, uh, you said earlier that we have not paid enough attention to it in terms of even gathering data to, to help us in fighting that. What do you advise moving forward? Moving forward, I think the, the main, the main um, 
way to look at it is a two or three pronged approach. First of all, we should improve diagnosis. I mean, our laboratories should be equipped to be able to pick up lupus primarily in the blood. Secondly, we should have more awareness and sensitization like um, this good program has made available this morning. We should be able to tell people mm. about this rare genetic condition. Right. And thirdly, we should know that it's not contagious. And mm. so if someone has lupus, it doesn't mean you can't get married to the person or you shouldn't get close to the person. It's not one of those diseases that would move from one person to another. Mm. And so I think these are the three main ways we could look at it. And um, mm. holistically, we could be able to tackle the problem. Doc, I thank you very much for your time this morning. Uh, you've been very, very resourceful. Thank you very much, and thanks for having me once again. Right. And that's good... DSP Dr. Faisal Ayambila. He is all the way in the United Kingdom. He's been sharing some medical thoughts as well uh, with us about lupus. Today is World Lupus Day. We're commemorating the day, but the story is not as exciting as one would expect it to be. So... You know, if somebody has lupus, that's not the end of the world for that person. There's help. Go out there, get help. But let's rant, shall we? Uh, the fisheries ministry has announced that it wants to have a closed season of, the, of uh, water so that we can have more fish, both for artisanal uh, fishes and for industrial fishes. But the fisher folks are not happy about it. Traders are also not happy about it. Let's hit the streets and find out more. Last year, fishers across the country put up a fierce resistance when governments announced its intention of a closed season. According to the fishers, the timing was wrong. They were ill-prepared and there was also no broader consultation. This year, governments will go ahead with the closed season. Some of the fishers have agreed, others are still insisted that the timing is wrong. We are here at the Albert Bosom Sam Fishing Harbor to speak to some of the fishers what they make of the close season. This is the Daily Rant. My name is Eric Yeoje. Let's keep talking. <laughs> You <laughs> Chinese 
I'm not coming on my brother. I've been no say walk up. I'm not for you. Be alone to the man. I'm not coming on Chinese for what? Panaba. You are what I'm saying. You go for you. We're doing Kaya Gupum. It's the Ayan in the Chinese for in the world. I can sing one. I'm not what's up. Mokosan or Yama Beni Yamano. Then I could find on number one. Yat I say a Punesida Lutum. You know, that's how this is. I will be doing with them. My other country, my time in there. China phone one more money. I want you to put them. I had my China for what I am to your crew. I bet that one more. I can do loan. Yes, I told you, I saw me. I didn't hear Juma. Now, I saw for so what to pim. Now, I saw for what the worst can war be do. When you know what to pim. Now, what's the money from my bar and the man of our bed is car? No, she is a second father. And Pony Abbey about twenty six at the Mia Wabby. I could for Roman at my age. Oh, yeah, Ban, I know Shambra. You to me and Totonem Brassi. I know Oben, oh, yeah, man, no, 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 Pado, yeah. Ya <laughs> O sanga ya kan na le pa wa ya wi onye da china funu onye e bernard na ya kwono china funu wona bu ono wodi tu china no ana wodi se sai ko eti sai ya wo ti ya me an kopu na china funu a wona bo kopu no o ti de ma ya so ya kopu na la se pe wo tu mi za wa ho hen ya le ya djuma ya so ya djuma anya pa na ade nti ya sra ban wo hwe na wo ya ho bibi a fale so na ya djuma be la a couple of years ago, we were talking about the same thing. 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 We were talking Since I had you with a Kakasupo, where yes, Jampo, Namma, Namma, Samanya, Namma, Kanya, the dead. The Mabuat, the Mabuafuni, now one quapo. Even I was found that I should suffer was so poor. One quapo. You bet in Namukomaya, Kadawasi, you call store, and Nam Jabari and Po, Namum, the China, Funan, one Jaya, as a Babanisi. Ministers, move and shut the China boat to the Guano. Oh, yeah, what do you need to? Why would you want to pay? Would you be decide? No, I can't say you're not dead. China, for I want to work at the fear of Bushme Bassa. In China, she had the fear of Bushmo. China, you're your wife, my brother. China, for no. Wakapo, <laughs> Man, I'm going to come to school. And it's a bad out to Prima. Me, you may have my info. Well, I was school. I haven't even been when I was school. I had him about Hoyan. It's a really, I don't know what I can also say. I put it in a yard, you know, on two. Capital for the walk over Yanam, the Mishmiana, and I had him like a can crab. And I'm a chance of creating eight point five, nine million into Puna one two. I put to me down, but on the six Saturday, one tomorrow, I've been over in Sky.
some fishing about have agreed to government close season this year which is expected to take off on May 15 but their prime concern is the activities of Chinese trawlers according to them they are rather destroying the sea so if government says that Ghanaian boats should not go and fish equally the Chinese vessels should also not go and fish 
what do you think? You can go onto our various social media platforms and post your comments there. My name is Eric Oje, and this has been the Daily Rant from Sekendi here at the Albert Busumchi Sam Fishing Hub. The Ghanaian Times begins the morning and says government set up special security agency to combat crime groups, syndicate troublemakers. The president photographs here. And for some people declines the ID invitation, NDC Council of the Elders uh, backs him. That's the story. Also on the front page of the Ghanaian Times, AMA action stores work on Office of Special Prosecutor uh, Office Complex. That's the Ghanaian Times. Daily Guide says it is a witch hunt. NDC dares CID over Ofosuampofo. Uh, NCA closes radio stations. And Aisha sister jams bail. That's the Daily Guide. The Daily Graphic Special Prosecutor quizzes Bisu Wusu. They were mentioned in Anasa's Galamse documentary. And NDC cries foul over Ofosuampofo. Police to deal with issue through legal process. The finder, NCA, we are enforcing the law. Radio Gold's license expired in 2000. Radio XYZ's license expired in 2016. That's on the finder. These are some of the stories we'll be taking a look at. My guest to do the talking this morning, Richard Ahinagbae is a member of the MPP's team and is here. Richard, good morning. Very good morning, uh, sir. Hope your Friday has been good so far. Very promising, and there's a very important uh, program today at the uh, uh, College of Surgeons. The Dankwa Institute it, program. Yes, uh, mm -hmm. today uh, to talk about the economy, how we can leverage uh, domestic mo uh, revenue mobilization mm -hmm. to underwrite our development quest. I think it's important, and viewers can join. Grateful. That will be 10 o'clock this morning. Yeah, 10. Okay, yeah. right. At uh, the College of Physicians and Physicians Surgeons. And surgeons. Right. A member of the NDC is the team is also here. A digital macro is also here with me. Good morning to your good Friday's morning. been good so far. Yes, yes uh, we can only be hopeful mm -hmm. and uh, thankful to God at the same time. And good morning to my senior brother Richard here and your good self mm -hmm. and the uh, ardent uh, viewers of uh, New Day. Uh, we are confident that uh, this matters. As you are also aware, the incoming president of the Republic of Ghana, John Dramani Mahama is in London, Oxford, to deliver a lecture, basically to promote whatever it is that we are doing here in Ghana. Yeah. Grateful. Let's start the conversation this morning. Certainly, the Ufusampofu issue will dominate conversations this morning. The NDC has stated that it will not allow its national chairman, uh, Mr. Ufusampofu, to cooperate with the police in investigations linking him to recent happenings. Uh, the kidnappings and fire outbreaks at markets. In addition, the party said none of its former ministers and other appointees would cooperate in any inquisition on issues that took place when the party was in government. Uh, this is known uh, as the issue uh, broke out. Uh, officers of the party said this. Uh, so yesterday, elders of the party held a press conference and said that Mr. Ofusuampofu was not under any ob compulsion obligation to assist the police in the investigations. He has no assistance to render to the CID as far as this matter is concerned. He said, adding that if the CID wishes to arrest our national chairman, they can proceed to do so. And they asked members to show solidarity with the uh, chairman. The Council of Elders uh, arguing that uh, this is a clear attempt to suppress dissenting views in the country. Elijah Mahama Idrisu said the persecution of the party's officials was malicious and intended to frustrate the work of the NDC and its mobilization towards the 2020 elections. The police, however, said, uh, according to Daily Graphic, that they will deal with the matter through the legal process. Edigi, let me give you the chance to start this conversation. Uh, uh, clearly, um, the party had reasons why they think the, the chairman should not appear before the CID. Absolutely. And um, I have indicated my great respect for the institution called the Ghana Police Service. Let it be placed on record that when it comes to the welfare of police officers, never in the history of this country, at least post-1992, has a party, a political party, consciously dedicated efforts 
towards promoting the welfare, the good image of the Ghana Police Service than it happened. And in fact, I've always made this point that one of the first institutions that we place on the single spine salary structure had to do with the Ghana Police Service because we know the inherent risk associated with the work of policemen and women. And so we have always conducted our affairs with the Ghana Police Service. The record will also show, even the last presidential primary that we did, we used officers of the Ghana Police to ensure peace and order relative to the conduct of those primaries, and it went on smoothly. So our relationship with the Ghana Police has always been one of the best and mutual. Now, it's important to make the point that the leadership of the CID under Madame Tiwa Adodankwa has now regrettably been reduced to the propaganda wing of the new patriotic party and Nanado Dankwa Akufu Ado. Look, post Ayaso West Wagon, when officers and men clothed with the National Security Council attire went on shooting spray in the most bizarre, unprofessional manner, Ghana Police Service decided to leave those men and to look for the national chairman on the basis of a purported doctor tape for the sole purpose. When those things happened, the legal team advised the national chairman that consistent with our belief that the law must always take its course, cooperate with them. So together with us, we went to the Ghana Police Service we met the deputy director, CID, Mr. Chenebua, Nana Sasaku, lawyer Pente, and co. For whatever it is that they wanted from the national chairman, we unveiled him to that due process. Utmost respect to the institution called the Ghana Police Service. In fact, the day the NDC MPP met on this vigilante issue, the police again invited the national chair. We unveiled ourselves to them. They invited two of our national officers, Sami Jemfi and Kwekubwain. Again, we took them to the Ghana Police Service to cooperate with them for whatever investigation. The first time when we appeared before them, and I recall right there, they came out with some charges. The chairman denied with a PowerPoint presentation, with an audio recording. They played it out. He denied it. Then they said, look, which will excuse them. So after about two hours, they came back. And now said, look, having consulted whoever, they are bringing two additional charges. And so they want further statement from the national chair. In fact, I sat by him. He denied those charges. Finally, what they had to do was that they called him back and said, look, they are preferring a charge of kidnapping. Listen, ridiculous as it is, we said, Chairman, just go through the process. He again gave his statement denying it. Finally, we're there when the police called that they have filed a criminal case at the general jurisdiction and that the case has been assigned to Commercial Court 1. Once again, even though we had notice of this for almost a week, we unveiled ourselves. He went through the due process of law. Now, when the case commenced, we indicated to the court that you have charged the chairman of having conspired with Kwekubwahe. Mm. The fact you presented before the court, invoking the criminal jurisdiction of the court, reads, and I quote, that on the third day of February 2019, Chairman Ufoswan Pofo met Kwekubwahe at the NDC headquarters and at that meeting together with other communicators present, conspired to do A, B, C, D. Now, when you read even the charge sheet, you see the partisan manner in which the charge sheet was, you know, was couched. 
obviously to promote quote unquote an MPP agenda. Uh, but you see, uh, uh, no, hold no, on. Pardon me. Mm. Since this particular case is before. Mm. Uh, no, your, so I, I do not want to yes, go yes, into it. But I just, no, I just want you mm. to see certain right. trends. Mm. So we finally said, look, they claimed that there was conspiracy. The Deputy National Communication Officer, Kweku Boahe, was not, in fact, in Accra on the third day of February. So we subsequently then filed a notice of alibi. We went to court on the sixth day of May, that's Monday. Then the Attorney General came to court and presented to us the evidence they intend relying on during the prosecution. We were clear in our minds that without evidence, for whatever it is, we are confident of the innocence of our national chairman. So when this ridiculous, dubious invitation under the signature of Madame Tiwa Adodankwa Ekufu, uh, 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 what's her name? Tiwa Adodankwa Ekufu. No, no, mm. oh, Tiwa Adodankwa. Uh, Tiwa Adodankwa. Tiwa Adodankwa. That's not Ekufu. Okay. Okay. We felt that, look, for whatever it is worth, it's important that we send a clear message to Madame Tiwa that the CID unit of the Ghana police will outlive her. She will come and she will go. But the Ghana police service, service will integrity will forever remain. What is the basis of this? To the extent that the Ghana police service who decide to weaponize its investigating processes for the sole purposes of promoting an MPP agenda, we find that at this point, there was no longer the need, the respect that we have for that sacred institution to continue to engage them. Because at this point, the CID unit has effectively been reduced to a unit only to one defame the national chairman, smear him with a ridiculous and wicked lie. And unfortunately, it is the CID that is promoting that lie. I was expecting that myself and my senior brother Richard, we can meet here and judge you and say whatever and move on. But when a credible institution or state, like the Ghana Police Service, a CID unit, headed by Madame Tiwa Dankwa Akufo, will now be the use or be used for the sole purposes of tarnishing. And why are we saying that it is to tarnish his image? Okay, wrap up from, let me get yes, with I you. Yes, I will. Today. It's to tarnish his image is simple. Today, myself and my brother here, or any MPP communicator, if there is a discussion on insecurity in this country, all the MPP communicator will do is to pull out the statement or the letter from Tiwa Dodankwa where the CID now makes a categorical statement that their intelligence, you see, is different. If you are saying that, look, ABCD has said, and so you are calling me to assist you. This one, the police say, their intelligence relative to uncovering the fires, arsons, and kidnapping, whoever it is has said that the national chairman has engaged them to do that for the sole purposes of creating fear and panic. What it does is that it takes the eye from the incompetence that has so far been shown by Madame Tiwa Dodankwa as the CID boss to the NDC. So that instead of government being responsible for the security of the people in this country, what government will now be doing is that, look, even the CID says, it is the NDC that is responsible for the fires. Okay. But before I go on, so that you can just one minute, so my brother will come in. Look, we have a CID boss who for the first time will call a press conference at nobody's prompting to do what? To say that these young ladies that have been kidnapped, she knows their whereabouts. To the extent that even the Attorney General of this Republic found that conduct to be unacceptable. Because we do know, when somebody kidnaps someone and you are even in the process of negotiating the release of the person, you keep the entire process with a certain level of confidentiality. 
So that what you do is that you have a liaison officer to deal directly with the family members of those so affected. Now you have a CID officer basically to please the ruling government. Comes out, that's a press conference, to say that these cases have been found. Then a pro-government newspaper daily guy comes another time and says, look, the girls are even in the country, basically toying with the emotions of the family members associated. Today we have been told that the CID boss was misled by the BNI in coming to that conclusion. Now the question is, if the CID boss can be misled by the BNI, it tells you that any time you get any information, you must first verify that information okay. before you proceed to put pen on paper okay. in the manner that seeks to tarnish the image of Chairman of Oswampov. Under grateful. the circumstance, mm. we will not, we will not, if they want, at best, is to arrest him. Grateful. Beyond arrest, you detain him. We'll go to court and face the full rigors Grateful. of the law. Richard, so uh, uh, Mr. Osampov's uh, legal uh, person says that his invitation <coughs> will be prejudicial to his ongoing trial on the matter. Again, he says that uh, any citizen of a country has a constitutional duty to assist the law enforcement agencies in the discharge of their mandate. But in this particular case, what has happened, the invitation is a gross abuse of the investigative and prosecutorial powers of police as a public institution. That is what EDUG uh, has just uh, uh, reiterated here. Is, is, are they right? Oh, the, the NDC or Mr. Osampo? Yes, and his lawyers. They think that inviting him will be prejudicial to what the first trial is undergoing now. Right. Good morning again to you and uh, to my good brother here uh, and to your viewers. Uh, good morning to the President, His Excellency, and uh, uh, all uh, my good people in Ketu South. Um, right. Extreme dramatization, mm, unreasonable characterization of a simple, decorous, civil invitation to help mm. in the process of building uh, consensus and seeking to solve problems that concerns us in this country. A civil responsibility all of us must take seriously. The invitation was extended to Mr. Fosu Ampofo contingent upon certain uh, intelligence that the police have picked up, uh, which has to do with him. Uh, and so there's a backdrop uh, of uh, uh, certain things that he has said, uh, there's a character or more or less a comment that is made that makes it necessary that, okay, well, uh, maybe you have foreknowledge about something like this, or maybe you can help us, you know, in trying to resolve an issue that concerns all of us. I see that to be, um, I don't want to use uh, the word, but I see that to be an abdication of his civil responsibility mm. to help in, in building uh, the kind of peace and security that they uh, are in hurry every day to say is, is not present and the more has to be done to bring about security, which is what the police is doing, but they are failing to cooperate. Uh, so, is he right? The first person you lead, if you're a leader, is yourself. If you fail to lead yourself, you cannot lead anybody. So for me, in very simple terms, hmm, the NDC, the Council of Elders, led by very renowned and people who have given their life to serve this country, uh, perhaps at the very height of uh, their service to this country, have failed to lead themselves. And in doing so, I failed all of us. To say that a simple invitation to come and assist in the investigation or answer questions uh, has resulted in the groundswell of NDC machinery, the kind of energy, the mobilization that brings out the Council of Elders to sit write a letter, hold a press conference, say one person, a citizen invited to answer question will not go. We all NDC will feel attacked by that. For me, 
is a failure to lead oneself. The NDC has a responsibility as a political party, we know that, to help shape the policy, the agenda of this country. Which for me, if we are focused on what this president is doing, is to build a better future for our posterity, okay? That is the agenda. That always in politics is the calling of any generation. We do things that make things better for those who succeed us. So an invitation to help has become a whole political discussion that we have to waste our time on, that we have to expend resources to call very serious people who have sacrificed their time to serve this country, to hold a press conference to say, Chairman Ofosu Ampofu is not going to CID. Needless. Very, very unfortunate. In fact, very disappointing. A very terrible and bad precedent. I heard the former president, His Excellency John Dramani Mahama, the flag bearer of the NEC, talk about precedent. Focusing on the negative and perhaps the non-exemplary display of elevation of the idea that we are creating some kind of precedent in this country by inviting some, a citizen to help police. That's the kind of precedent he wants to focus on. But right this morning, I want to submit to all of us that the better precedent that we need to be setting is that if the police Legitimate law enforcement uh, agency of this country, which my brother told us they are interested in, they have invested in, and they respect, but suddenly they don't see the need to respect Not the same one. institution anymore. Not this one. You see, right. Well, my brother is also going wrong here again. The, the, the institution is not a bad individual. Now, if you have decided to wage war on that individual, Mm -hmm. You don't attack the institution. I agree with you that they have their political motive for doing so. But I guarantee you, Bright, that Madame Tiwa Adodankwa does not head any propaganda wing in the MPP. She does. Bright, I want to also suggest to you this morning, I hope my brother will pick it and the rest of his <laughs> NDC people, that the MPP, the New Patriotic Party, we don't have any propaganda wing. We are not known for it. <laughs> If there is anything, they have one. They used to be propaganda secretary mm. in the NDC, who is now the communication officer. They are still struggling every so often they call propaganda. We don't have one. Okay? And Madame Tiwa Adodankwa is a legitimate police officer who entered the service not yesterday, not in 2017. Uh, she was in the service during their time when they were proud of the police service. Uh -huh. She we did vital that. work. Sorry. She did vital work for the police when they were in government. So what happened? What is happening, I can tell you, Bright, is their NDC is failing to lead themselves. And that is a terrible danger we face as a people going into 2020. And people who cannot lead themselves are seeking to lead this country. That is the danger. If you cannot lead yourself, by virtue of democracy, we're going to go, you have a flag bearer, and therefore you're going to assemble and put things on paper, and people are going to choose. But this group of people have failed to lead themselves. What is the next thing they are raising is prejudicial to the case in court. That's the main reason why they said he won't go. Total invalid argument. The premise of that argument is flawed. He's the lawyer, I'm not a lawyer. But what's the basis? What if a police called you, you have rights. They invite you, you have rights, mm. okay? To save us all this political tension. And if you have astute lawyers, which I think, my brother, I don't know if you are part of the legal team. Yes, Eva, yesterday, mm. I, I had to go and deliver the letter. Okay, are they please? Uh, yes. Okay, which is f fantastic if you want to do that, even though the position for me, I disagree. But, right, if you have to do that, go to the police uh, or uh, CID office, you, Mr. Fusu and Pofu and your lawyers, go there. You have rights, okay? If he asks you a question, if you don't want to answer, you don't want to answer. You have to, if you think that question is going to, uh, you know, be detrimental to your position in court, if you're going to commit to yourself, you don't answer the question. You have lawyers. They will advise you on the spot. 
Say, that's one, don't. So why do you create this tension as though when you go there, they're going to just open your mouth and take everything out of it? Let me ask you this. You, you raised an issue of political tension. Could the police have also done this in a way not to have triggered what we are, we are in now? Right. The police have done excellently the only thing they could have done. <laughs> the alternative to writing him nicely in a civil way come would have been go there, marshal, and pull him away and arrest him. That's what the NDC is asking to be done. So for them, the escalation of tension in this country, they see it as profitable for them. Because then they have the, 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 the leverage to come and sit on TV, on radio, and say, oh, unrest and insecurity. I don't see that to be patriotic. I don't see that answering the call that the president made to all of us okay, on January 7, 2017, to say that let's all engage as citizens, not spectators. In fact, the NDC is not even engaging as spectators. They are engaging as troublemakers, people who are fomenting tension in this country. How in the name of God are you saying, simple invitation, come, and you are not going? This morning, my only plea to... His, uh, his Honorable uh, Samuel of Oswampo for this morning is to lead himself. Is to lead, because I know he's a leader. What they are saying yesterday, if you read the letter they put out, they are trying to incite their members. They are trying to say we have four, uh, four million or so members. We're talking about 30 or so million Ghanaians whose destinies are tied and that is why you're you understand. Uh, so, no, no, Edu Jalahim, he's, so, he's, 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 he's wrapping up. So, Edu Jalahim, he's, so, he's wrapping up. So, so, Bright, we should not, okay, try to superimpose our parochial interests on the larger interest of this country. You are talking about President Brett. One thing I have to learn this morning is how to really push and get more time because he did so, and I, I, I was oh, following. Oh, oh, you see, the, 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 every the, one of you has spoken <laughs> ten minutes, so <laughs> <laughs> that's right. it. Right, <laughs> you see, have equal time. Okay, he so spoke Brett, ten minutes. You are, you are just hitting ten minutes. Okay, so mm -hmm. let, let me hit ten minutes. Wrap up. Then. Right. So the truth of the matter is this: that. The situation we're in now is needless. What I would rather for us to be talking about this morning, okay, is free SHS. How that is going to change the destiny of this country 10, 20 years down the road. I want us this morning to talk about one district, one factory. How that has the potential to solve the unemployment problems we face in this country. I want us to talk about one village, one dam, to see how that is going to help our people, how, is, how that is going to help grow agriculture. I want us to talk about uh, increasing uh, rice production in this country, how that is going to help my people in the Volta region, Avaime, and uh, along the stretch, uh, where we can grow and begin to engage our people. Bright, I want us this morning to talk about the issues that will engage our children 10 years, 20 years from now, when they come to maturity, when they occupy this space you and I occupy today, to try to do their best to push Ghana's agenda but forward. But if we don't have security, can we talk about these? But you see, w this situation we have, okay, the, the appearance of uh, tension in this country was created by people. So what I'm saying, I'm saying to them that desist from that. Allow Mr. Fosu and okay. to lead himself hmm. by way of uh, uh, becoming a citizen. Go to the police, answer the question. If you can't answer, you think that question is going to make you compromise you for the case that you're answering in court. They don't answer. Tell them nicely. I cannot. But don't, by all means, don't mobilize, okay, your council of elders to create the impression okay, right, this is very dangerous. What the NDC is doing is to tell us, oh, okay, if you do something, we're also going to do something. Irresponsible. The laws must be applied. The mm. right things must be done today. Not to say, don't do it today, so I will also not do something tomorrow. It is about the people of Ghana, not about me, okay. not about the president, president not about Mr. Samuel Ofosu Ampofu. It's about doing we, right for Ghana, right? I'm That's grateful. what we have to do. Uh, uh, quick when, reaction. Yes, exactly. Don't you see, so my, my, to, my, my, yeah. my senior brother, Richard, makes the point about leading oneself. He does not know who Samuel Ofosu Ampofu is. Ghana's, but I know what he's doing please. now. Ghana's, he's not democ leading. Ghana's democracy, as you see today, 
the lives of Bufu Swampofu. From DC, Infantiaqua, local government minister, I know several that. of those positions. So when it comes to contribution to the development of this country, Samuel of Oswampofo is among a very few people mm -hmm. who have sacrificed to bring Ghana where it is today. Two, you talk about police invitation. Your current is it, is police, it a full reaction? Because uh, I would have no, 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 yes, no. We're just using two minutes each yes, because okay, we need to move your, to the other. Your time. current national chair, the police had calls to invite him on this issue of dissipation of party fans. When uh, Chairman Afoku lodged a complaint before the police ID, he told them he declined the invitation. Is, is that is that why no, 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 somebody no, is also not no. going? Is, is that the reason? All, first of all, no, Edu, is that the no. reason why it's not going? There is a constitutional requirement that under no circumstance, mm. in fact, there is a requirement against what self-incrimination and all that you can call them. Now you put out a letter and say I should come and assist you. In your own words, your intelligence have concluded what it is. No, he didn't say Please, that. read the letter. I read to, it. To, um, what, oh, oh, uh, to uh, what end are you calling me? To assist you as what? As a suspect, an accomplice, or what exactly? And you leak this particular letter to the media to weaponize your investigative processes for the sole purposes of partisanship. So, for instance, you then come and say, oh, when there are insecurity issues, blame the NDC for it. That is dubious. That is not honorable. Under no circumstance, when an institution or state is reduced to this law, citizens have the right to stop it. You cannot tell me, for instance, okay. that those men who were put in the national security t shirt came and shot directly into citizens. And today, our president has a problem with the leak of the report, and not the persons who shot life ammunition into ordinary Ghanaian citizens. You are saying it is the NDC that is fomenting trouble. What Ghanaians ought to say is that on the 31st day of January, but for the timely intervention of Chairman Ufosu Ampofo, we do not know what would have happened on that day. Because our president, who is the chair of the National Security Council, deployed his men to recklessly fire life ammunition. And he's keeping the report. What is he doing with the report? Energy, I'm grateful. Our president who believes in accountability is not willing to put the report out. And, then we'll and you to talk about the, the NDC issue. leading itself. OK. Richard, you need that message. Right. Quickly. If you thought I needed that message, you would have given it. <laughs> okay, so I gave it to you. Okay. You must comply. It's good for you. It's good for the NDC. Okay. Right. Now, let's talk seriously. He, he talks about the credentials of uh, Mr. Samuel Fosuampofo. Mm. Absolutely. He served this country. The only thing I was saying is that he should continue to serve this country, mm. not stop at the point. Because his action in this critical moment amounts to stopping to serve this country. No. He ceased to lead no. himself. In other words, he cannot lead anybody. His lawyers are you understand? Lawyers. Now let me tell you, <laughs> he talks about his credentials, so let me talk about an individual. They have maligned in this country. Oh. His Excellency the President. Yes. Another person who served this country with his life, his resources, 40 years, put his life, his life on the line. I always credit His Excellency uh, jo uh, John, uh, Jerry John Rawlins for you know, the coming into force of uh, the Fourth Republic. Go and see what the likes of Elizabeth or he and co said about Jerry Rawlins. That can I, um, can I, can I, can I, you understand? Let's let, let, let wrap up. You then. understand? I'm, I just started, Brian. Right. Yeah. I, I shouldn't wrap no, up. Let, let's move on. We, we're running, we're running <laughs> right. out of time. I have said so it's just about, a reaction. Yes. We're running out of time. I have said so about uh, former President Rawlings. Okay? The same should be said about His Excellency Leonardo Danko Kufuado. Because this is an individual who put his body on the line in very difficult times in this country to push the agenda of this fourth republic. <laughs> you understand? So when you are talking about serving this country, he has served this country. The only difference which we need to note, even though the NDC and my brother this morning went on a tangent of maligning the president, despite, no. despite his incredible service to the president, 
thing I have to say in continuation, comparing him to Mr. Samuel Fuzwapofo, though the comparison doesn't stand, is that he has continued to lead. He is still leading. With the all die with die statement? Yeah, you understand. He is leading this country in ways that, in fact, I tell you, Bright, the NDC need to measure up. That tell is, me, that tell me. Oh, no, oh, okay, please. Okay, right, right. Uh, Richard, uh, Richard wrap up and let's yes, let's yes. jump into another. Let me stop no, 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 and wrap up quickly. Right. Just right. ten seconds. Right. Wrap up. Yeah. If you see a president, okay, whom when you look at the ideological positions, you think that okay, we're more leaning uh, right, is one who has implemented a social redistributive policy in this country. In, in this country. In the name of free so SHS. That is an individual who is continuing to lead. Hmm. That is an individual who is not ideological, but is leading in ways that is characterological, leading this country continuously and forever because that's what we must do. Mr. Fosuampofo must learn from this. I'm he must grateful. not come to a moment where he thinks that he has sacked. Oh, please, grateful. please, you know, please. I, I, he must not come to a point where he thinks he's led enough and therefore stop leading I'm to create the tension we have in this country. NDC bears sole responsibility for this tension. I'm we have. grateful. It's Ghanaian needless. Times Pink 7 says that two radio stations uh, closed on Radio Gold, Radio XYZ. Uh, the NCA uh, says that they are only uh, implementing a ruling by the uh, Electronic Communications Tribunal. Um, uh, it said that it, is, it will continue to shut down radio stations that have defaulted in perhaps renewing their licenses. Radio Good, Radio XYZ um, are the first two to go. Um, so it's a long story, but I think we don't have a lot of time, but let's uh, start from here. Richard, so let me start this conversation with you. Uh, this is where we are. Uh, NCA says that it's only implementing a ruling by a tribunal ordering that those who fail to renew licenses must not be allowed to operate. Yes. Uh, but uh, again, the uh, GIPA, which is the Independent Broadcast Association, is suggesting that um, the manner in which it was done is, was, is too harsh. What did he suggest? That the manner in which yeah. the NCA did the, the closure mm -hmm. is too harsh. They are suggesting that they could have continued to speak to these radio stations. Till when? Well, they didn't say that. Yeah. See, so when you say that, it's, it's one of those things that is easy. I want to join him to say, let's find other ways instead of closure. Mm -hmm. Because the NCA is not interested in closing people down. Because after all, they are the ones issuing the spectrum uh, frequency to people. You understand? So their business is not shutting radio stations down, but to issue frequencies and people comply with the terms under which they receive those authorizations and continue to use it. You understand? Uh, I, I was I was saddened yesterday, and I continue uh, to uh, support uh, calls or ideas to help resolve this issue. Uh, but you see, Radio Gold, I listened to Radio Gold for a long time. It's been around for a very, very long time. Mm. Uh, I have good friends uh, who worked there before. They no longer work there. XYZ, I have good friends who work there. Uh, so the, the, the point here for me is to try to say that what are we trying to do as a people mm. in building this country? What is our motive? What is the grand agenda? Uh, it is to create a space that there, there will be fairness, uh, in terms of how we deal with each other, and, and that fairness translates into uh, being responsible, okay, and, and taking uh, the space that we, we, we share seriously in understanding that we, we have laws, okay, that conditions our behavior. So what, are, what this is all about is the expiration of their authorization. Their exactly. Right. And, and before... Uh, you, you set up or when you went for this authorization, the terms and when you have to, what you have to do to continuously use that frequency uh, is, is, is clearly spelled out. You have a five year period of author, uh, author, authorized use and three months before the end of that fi uh, fifth year, you will take steps to renew your, your, uh, your authorization so you can continue to use it. Now, you have to do that because, Bright, uh, the, the, the spectrum space we have is limited, okay? It is not uh, um, uh, more or less, uh, more or less uh, uh, an 
more is, 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 is a finite product, is mm. what I'm trying to say. To the extent that we, we would have me have a frequency that I'm using is a national asset. So I, I am supposed to uh, legitimize my use of it based on the, the laws that defines I its usage. So any time you fail to do that, then really you are, you are taking um, a national asset without complying with the necessary regime. So the painful thing here is this, that the, I wonder why uh, Red, uh, Radio Gold uh, good station that I listen to uh, would not try to uh, renew its uh, authorization, knowing how critical they are to to the the uh, the space that we we all uh, will all enjoy. And and, and if for some reason uh, they they have forgotten, and for so long, I think from what I'm hearing, Bright is that since 2000, okay, their authorization expired. Mm -hmm. That's what reports are saying. Uh, XYZ since 2016. What what enables you to allow this thing to go uh, right elsewhere? This would have been uh, a criminal thing because you are using an asset that you don't have legitimate right to use. It's a terrible thing to do, right? Mm. Right. Okay. Gold, Radio Gold is is a good station. But then the f management have failed, in, in my view, in trying to uh, be good citizens, corporate citizens, to ensure that today I, I would tune into Radio Gold on my way to, to your studios and things of that nature. I am at the disadvantage because of that today. So uh, I think that the rest of the radio stations out there and, and individuals out there who are running radio stations must learn that this is a property that belongs to the people of Ghana. And if it is something that is finite, and you know, in fact, right, the understanding... Quickly, I, yes, let me get to you. The understanding I'm having now is the, the demand for frequency is such... In, in, is, 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 is overwhelming. Like there's an average of uh, seven or so, uh, you know, applications for frequency a week. You understand? So when you have that, you must guard it jealously. You understand? To ensure that you have the legitimate use of it. So unfortunately, it has to come to this. But let's begin to understand that we have to be responsible. Okay. And all these radio stations out there, they must begin to regularize. Any failure to do so, one, right, is uh, seizing uh, due uh, revenue to the state and is using state assets without permission. And I don't think they should continue like that. Okay. Edgy. What, what do you make of it? You know, uh, the NCA has you raised know, issues. Uh, right. All over the world, what despots and dictators do is that they clamp down on the media disguised as law enforcement. Globally. Globally. So they legitimize whatever they do with the gap of law enforcement. The NCA today is making reference to the decision of the uh, Telecommunication Electronic Tribunal, tribunal that sits right just uh, a few, just behind the Ghana Police Service. I have appeared before that tribunal in a similar manner because the NCA in 2017 decided this same clampdown and so Ghana Independent Broadcasters Association, GIBA, among other radio stations, took the matter before the tribunal, chaired by a respected retired Supreme Court judge, Justice Datiba. I appeared before that panel for a particular radio station in the Western region. We put our case together. The tribunal ruled that the decision by the NCA to impose those penalties on the various was without any legal justification whatsoever, and therefore quashed all those penalties, and instructed the NCA to go back and go through the, the, uh, the renewal processes. Now, this is it. In the specific case of Radio Code, the law offices of Bram Labi and, and whatever, as we speak, are in continuous engagement with NCA. So what my, 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 and obviously I noticed that you're speaking from very lim limited uh, in terms of the facts. 
is that Radio Gold has been engaging and have sent all their documents to the NCA for the sole purpose of renewing their licenses. They have, in fact, done that. The posturing of the National Communication Authority, headed by Joe Anoche, is to frustrate this process of the renewal. And I've had several instances of writing letters to the NCA just to ensure these processes go through. Sometimes when I look back, I go back and read Nanado Danko Kufado's argument before the Supreme Court in the Radio I case and the conduct of state agencies under his presidency. I come to the realization that if you want to know the true nature of a man, give him political power. Just give him power and he will show you his true nature. The NCA today, and you see, curiously, curiously, these two radio stations were carrying live the press conference by the Council of Elders of the NDC in respect of this Ofosuan Puffo matter. With a Gestapo, you know, star, stormed the radio station, accompanied by policemen. Mr. said it's, it. it's, it's, it's normal. They, that's anywhere they're going, you, they have you, you know, That is what I'm saying that it's, it's all normal. over the world. What people do, tyrannical people do, is that they justify, they normalize wrongdoing. Because, SYZ, I do know that their officers have been engaging and they have written to NCA, Radio Go, they have written to NCA, submitted a full complement of their document, incorporation, their statement of account, several of these documents to NCA. Why, in the name of God, would you use policemen? Storm the radio station as though something untoward. When already they have established a communication link with you, it's a simple matter. Under the leadership of Nanado Dankweku for Ado, today, today, the harassment of so called perceived dissent is not only limited to the question of radio good and XYZ. We are all, uh, you know, aware of the fact that today, as we speak, Judging from what Professor Kakare of the West African Media Foundation has said, Manasseh Azuri had to be exiled to South Africa. Uh, hold on, you, hold you, on, you, please. You please, don't please. believe in the NCA's suggestion that, I mean, these two stations are not the only ones and that there are other stations. No, I'm, I'm coming that, there. That, and you will uh, see the orientation. Mm. You will see the orientation. Okay, quickly. We're if it had to do there. with infraction of law, like mm. I pointed out, the NCA Act, there is always a last resort. When all avenues Which are not, what? please, no, when no, all no, avenues are not result? exhausted, like mm -hmm. I indicated, mm -hmm. what you do is that one, you can even write to the station telling them that you are giving them up to so and so. If you do not put your house in order, we will engage you in this. Like I told you, Radio Gold Management have already been dealing with NCA through a reputable law firm. Outside this, you storm the radio station. You act in this regular. In fact, I, a letter I wrote to NCA last year, they are yet to even respond to that letter. So what I am saying is that Joe Anoche and others must know that tyranny, tyranny, the question of tyranny, it is like every natural resource. It is never limited. Whatever it is, it has hold as creation and it will come back to you. When you what, least what, what the government can be used so to, to deal with this? That is why I told you that uh, uh, the matter went uh, before a tribunal. The so tribunal gave a roadmap. All these radio stations have complied with the roadmap. They have sent their letters for renewal of their licenses. The NCA has taken a particular posturing. For instance, if you are saying renewal, am I going to keep my same the frequency, frequency 90.5? Are you going to well, change he says they could it? So these are the reply for fresh so, spectrum, you know, that, suggesting that uh, they could lose their exactly. uh, frequency. So how are you okay. going to tell so, Radio Go that by reason of a renewal, you are going to lose your 90.5 frequency or whatever? These are the, so it calls for what dialogue, right. con engagement. Okay. You don't do this. Right. You stop the radio station, Gestapo yeah, staff, no, no, to no. ensure that no. yes, we are in power. Right. We okay. have power. Right. Richard, thirty seconds. I have no, no, this, this, this is a regret. They need more than no, no, right, no, right. On, on a more on a more serious note, mm. I, 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 I seize the way from getting into the legal stuff 
uh, because I feel that the responsibility uh, is part, unfortunate. The responsibility part it's is more important okay. to be able to make sure that the business you are doing, the co the central piece of it is your frequency. How do you forget? They How, never did. Please, please. No, he said please, that. Please, please. No, no, no. Don't do that. No, no, Brian. No, 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 no. Please, please. 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 And please, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. It was, in fact, do you know that in oh, the specific case of Radio SYZ, uh, NCA please, 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 please. wrote to them look, look. to come and cover a program oh, they'll be yeah, doing yeah, this I, month. I, I've seen that letter too. Right, okay. I mean, so, I mean, so I mean, that, uh, Richard, it, yeah. it, it, it is sometimes a bit uh, confusing when look, let's the be fair, right, station has an expired license. You have radio stations associated with them. No, 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 please, that's not even the point. Going forward. Wait, wait, wait. Right, right, very important. Quickly, quickly, because I have run up here, actually. Yes, important. Let's decouple couple the issue of radio station failing to do the business thing of renewing their frequency mm. authorization mm. from mm. the media operation we need to do that this ingeniously my brother did couple the two i want i want to draw that line now let's also yes yes because they are, they are not linked at all that the next thing bright we need to know is that this issue in 2017 or uh, 2017 or so when the original uh, effort was made to close down certain stations there was an engagement okay where the nca levies on fines some of these radio stations went to court and the court ruled okay in the matter oh, and I'm the court Richard, i don't have time so no, 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 i'm looking at how to deal with it yes so briefly the, 10 seconds so the point the point is this that the nca is only implementing the court ruling they, which they says cannot, oh, they cannot oh, dialogue uh, uh, richard they, have they cannot dialogue the as the tribunal dialogue how okay i'm grateful richard ahiagba is a member of the npp Eddie Tamaklu is a member of the NDC wow, team. Stay with us. Oh, All right, uh, we get into this bit of the conversation where we're having a group of anointed prophets. You want to call this uh, a legion? No, that's in a negative vein. Let's call it a group of anointed prophets who are gathering to share business ideas and also delve into areas that I'm sure are not too familiar with. Now, I'm pleased and blessed to have in the series today Prophet John Anoche. Uh, he is a presiding a prelate Worldwide Word Ministries and uh, also uh, John Anoche Ministries because I know last year you guys started the meeting edition of the Prophetic Business uh, Conference. He's joined by Apostle Chris Bedema. He's an executive pastor also with the same ministry. Guys, welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. So let's just straight into it. I know you started on Wednesday. Yeah. Uh, you want to tell us about this prophetic business conference everybody's talking about? Yes. Um, the prophetic uh, business conference is actually five years now. Wow. But the Zera um, business fair is um, the, in the second year. Oh, wonderful. Uh, also, it's uh, part of the prophetic business it, conference. It is, yeah, yeah. All right. It's part. It's like um, a platform that um, has been created um, as part of the prophetic business conference to. Mm. Um, sort of um, bring on board um, exhibitors, entrepreneurs, in order to um, showcase the ideas and to also make sales and to market their product. Whoa, it's that's... a platform that we've been given to um, the business people, mm. um, especially um, in the church and even outside the church, to to come and do business together. Uh, this is to sometimes exchange, you know, cards together. Th this is very innovative, especially when a lot of people look at the church as a place for feeding the soul and everything spiritual. But you're trying to make sure that hey, you pray, but you must eat. Yes. Uh, is that the, is that the idea, uh, Pastor Bedema? Yes, uh, you can put it that way. You know, the Bible says that. I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health, mm. even as a soul prosper. So God is looking at the holistic approach to life. Mm. So it's not only about the spiritual life. So that's one thing I really love about this prophet of God. You know, he teaches business. He teaches, he grooms businessmen to start businesses. And you can, we have people like people who are doing work, who have started businesses based on the teaching mm. and all of that. So it's just amazing how that he touches on every area of life, marriage, family, and all that. So, so who are the targets? Who are you looking at uh, attracting to this Zero Affair? Everybody. Every, uh, um, you know, in the past, we, we left off the Christian entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. and we only know to pray for them. <laughs> but um, we've discovered some, um, you know, some mystery in the Bible, principles of God in the Bible that our forefathers used um, and in their daily lives, mm. in their businesses, and they prospered. 
um, I was trying to find out um, the richest man in, 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 in the world over mm -hmm. since um, inception of the world. Mm -hmm. And guess who I found? Um, I found a Bible character that is all time rich. Mm -hmm. um, even the Americans have not even gotten to the point where this guy, his riches, you know, mm. uh, yes, was, was, was page art. Um, somebody like Solomon, mm. uh, when you quantify his riches um, from his businesses that he did, you know, he traded with Lebanese, he traded with um, um, the Palestinians, he traded with Egypt, he traded with a lot of people. And um, the Bible says that his riches, when you quantify, is about $25 trillion. Mm. Oh, so American's clear. economy is now page at somewhere $19, $20 trillion. So there were business secrets that this man used. Okay, the Bible says that God gave him wisdom and mm. knowledge. And so what was the kind of wisdom that God gave him that he attracted, you know, um, the business people and did business with people, pagans, and people were not even um, worshipping his God, mm. but, and he prospered. And so what was this business secret that he used? So these are many more principles that, you know, um, are coded in the Bible that through the mysteries of the, the prophetic, you know, mm. revelation, we, we gather them and then we teach men and women and okay. then um, to be able to uh, be a success in, right. in their businesses. So clearly we are going to tap into all this biblical knowledge or uh, scriptures and how that impacts your life. So quickly before we sign out actually, uh, so do we have a date, do we have a venue for this? Uh, quickly. Mm. Yes, of course. Um, mm. The Prophetic Business Conference is on the Saturday. The Tomorrow. Zera Business Fair started on Wednesday. Okay. So it's ongoing as we speak right now. All right. Um, but the business conference itself is going to start at tomorrow, which is Saturday, okay. at 2 p.m. Um, at the Accra City Hotel. Accra City Hotel, yes. former Novotel. So yes. clearly uh, it's open for all to come. So make sure uh, you're part of uh, this prophetic business conference. Also, the Zara uh, Fair as well. Many thanks to you for coming by this morning. And I'm sure you'd want to follow them on social media for more on this. When we come back, though, we find out uh, more from Mother's Day. Now, su Sunday is a day, and here at Media General, we have plans for you and your mother. Not uh, to talk of uh, the so many things you'll be winning and smiling about. So stay on, we'll be right back. My name is Giovanni Caleb. Now, for viewers out there, there's an opportunity for you to win big for your mother and yourself. Uh, exclusive five-star dinner experience on Mother's Day this Sunday. So we're giving you the opportunity to send us messages and also make sure you follow us on social media and keep those messages coming through um, uh, for that lucky spot. Just 10 lucky viewers. All right, we've got loads of messages this morning, uh, well, from all parts of the world. Uh, getting, uh, well, we'll get into that bit shortly. But yes, I'm joined here by Mr. Ken Addo. Now, he's my boss here in terms of lifestyle, entertainment, everything at Media General here. He's the right man to go to. Now, we're talking about our Mother's Day or Mommy's Connect That's 2019. Right. Finally, That's right. my guy, finally. all your behind the scene works, mm. finally, we can't see action. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, thank you so much. Mm. I, I woke up this morning, I didn't know you were coming. Chale, you know, you know, you and I know, we are not hey, morning people. You know <laughs> <laughs> it'll be easy but mm. it's all good i yeah. mean it's for for the love of the job mm. and and what we do but before i even start anything i would like to wish all my muslim friends and yeah. and brothers i can see uh, you're looking you know, apart you're representing yeah. the ramadan kareem to all of them you nice know it's, it's not an easy task but yeah. they have to go through yeah. uh, for the next is it, is it because you're here to have breakfast i mean is that why you're here? um i am actually you know working towards you know starting my <laughs> from monday so, that's okay yeah, keep postponing allah <laughs> we'll get you. <laughs> anyway, so yes, Mother's okay. Day on Sunday. What's uh, the plan? Mother's Day, of course, our mothers are very uh, wonderful people in our lives and great women. Not only people who have children are mm. mothers, but mm. uh, all the women out there. Uh, we, we're wishing them Happy Mother's Day in advance. So Sunday, mm -hmm. uh, we are connecting with them. We are okay. relating. We are interacting. We are engaging on Sunday at the four courts of TV3 right here. And what we are doing is that we are allowing all these mothers to come together. Uh, we share stories about mothers. We have features and documentaries that we are going to share with them. And uh, we're going to have fun with great music, live band music mm -hmm. uh, for them as well. And so all of that together, just to celebrate and say thank you to Mama. Mm. Thank you to uh, mothers right. out there. So this Sunday is happening. All right, so your mom just sent a message that she wants to see you without your cap. So we'll make that happen for her. <laughs> so Mommy is on standby. But I want to know the plan really, though, Ken, because uh, mm. I hear you have some exclusive live band performances. Yeah. And um, I'm getting the lineup, and I'm scared here like you. And all this is for free. 
all this is for free, actually. What we're doing is that, yes, we sent invites to some people, wonderful dignitaries mm. uh, here in Ghana, some wow. wonderful women that are going to be part of the event. Mm. Uh, on radio, on 3FM and uh, on your FM as well, we actually open the phone lines. We engage people to mm. win, share stories of your mother. People have shared stories. A lot of stories have come through on our social media handles at TV3 Ghana as well, you know, pictures of you and your mom, sharing a story about you and your mom, how mm -hmm. you've been together, and, you know, some wonderful and ex exciting stories about yeah. you. So we use all of that um, approach to select, okay. you know, some winners as well to join us. We yeah. have some female celebrities also joining us. With their mothers. Well, with their mothers. Wow. And, of course, there's some of them are mothers as yeah. well, you yeah. know. And then we have the evergreen, ever gorgeous, wonderful, dynamic duo Tego sisters also joining us on Sunday uh, to give us some great music from back in the day till now. I mean, Tego sisters have been at it for years now. Mm. And so we are putting them on the show Whoa. to serenade us with great music from so them. Live band music, Tego live sisters band confirmed. Music as well. And, and um, they, they are on. Um, other female celebrities, singers are also coming through, passing by, okay. you know, to also grace the occasion as well. Uh, what I, I don't go without is my food. Oh, yeah. So, I was going to get to that part. Yeah. You saw me looking away. Yes. <laughs> I was waiting for it. <laughs> yeah, I know you love food too. <laughs> Whether it's cold or hot. Oh, my eat. brother, uh -huh. we don't complain. So, on the day, we have great food, great mm. buffet, you know, lunch is served all on the house. Get to see TV3. Wow. And uh, we're doing this together with all our media general yeah. platforms. And of I course, want to say big sponsors. thanks to all our proud supporters yes, and sponsors. The sponsors. I, yes. have to, uh, I have to mention them. Oh, you have to. I have to mention them. I know them. my folks at NS Chemists are watching you exactly. right now. Cap Farm as well. Exactly. And all that. We and so we'd like to say big thank you to Cap Farm. Mm. Um, Oba Spaghetti, My Dear Rice, uh, Vlisco, Woodin, um, Silver and Queen, yes. Maybelline, mm. Dark and Lovely. Uh, we have Yas, uh, Yas Sanitary Pad, mm. Best Westing Plus, and also we have uh, Auntie Mary's Baby Gripe Mixture from NS Kevin. So these are all the sponsors that we have, and they are supporting us come Sunday, 12 May, at the forecourt of TV3. So Great from 1 p.m., it's action time. Yeah, it's going to be live, going to be live on, on, TV. on TV. I think mm. you should be there. And, uh, yes, you should be there. Yeah. Yeah, get seated, round table. You know, great music, great food, and great drinks as well, all together. And so, 12 p right. 12 p.m., 1 p.m., mm. live on TV from 2 p.m. Mm. So, those outside that cry, you may be watching us, uh, even though you may not have a taste of yeah. the drink. Yeah, yeah. and uh, for those of you in so, Kumasi Tadi, I mean, Connect and Akuma has also got you sorted uh, with their, uh, their, their, their Mother's Day right. plans as well. Right. Big thanks to you, Ken. Thank you so much. And spending your Friday morning with us. It's a difficult month to reach on a Friday. That I can tell you. But so, yes, so 1 p.m. and all our sponsors. Firms, like we say, we salute you as well and all that. Now we're also selecting our top 10 viewers today to win big for their moms. And we're talking dinner for 10. I mean, this is exclusive. This is something you want to get intimate. No phones allowed. So you can talk with mommy this time. Not sharing old, expired WhatsApp jokes. I will be right back after this break. Stay on. You see Arthur is fast becoming a household name. Now, this young talent blew minds away when he came topless. Uh, was that last year, VGMA? And uh, also picked an award for the night. Uh, this year, he's back, reloaded, recharged six or five different nominations. Uh, is that it? Five nominations this year for the VGMA, including Afro Pop Song of the Year, Hip Hop, Hip Life, Artist of the Year, uh, Highlight Song of the Year, Vodafone Most Popular Song of the Year, yes. and it goes on and on. I mean, this guy has had over what two million views yeah, or, two, yeah million two million views. the first week of release of uh, uh, his EP that Spotify Apple music and all that he's 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 a genius man welcome how you doing so my, my guy and I can't rap I'm gonna say crazy at that Charlie welcome to our show today it's yeah, new day yeah, it's a pleasure to be here good yeah. morning to everyone tuned in right now that's right yeah. Charlie so yeah the journey since uh, grind day yeah. uh, till now now you're out with a, an EP Yes. Uh, titled? Uh, Life from Nkumakom Volume 2. Okay. So it actually follows up from the first one. Okay. Which right. I dropped in like 2017. Okay. Yeah, and it has nine songs. Mm. It features Sarkodie, Shatawale, Stoneboy, Mr. Easy, Nasty C from South Africa, and Santi from Nigeria. Whoa, yeah. whoa. it's a crazy load of. And you surprised your fans with it? I mean, yeah, it's like, yes. yeah, it's been a long time coming. This is yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. We've actually been delaying the release of this tape since last year. It was supposed to drop last year. Oh, okay. But because of some stuff, we couldn't drop because it. Because you're so. busy making money, I hear. <laughs> 
Yeah. Not really. Your not life really, is transformed, my brother. Not really. Not you put really. on. Oh, okay. Yeah, you used to be slimmer than the imported Chinese uh, chewing sticks. <laughs> yeah, but now you're, you're a whole... Yeah, yeah. God is working. God you is working. God. No, you, don't, you no longer take off your top. Oh, I, I do it. Be that day that you go like, nah, yeah, I'm rich. I do it. I still do it. <laughs> okay. Let's talk about the EP. Now, um, a lot of people put you on a lot of attack because they feel like, as a rapper, and one of the favorite rappers of that, you're swinging to the singing more. You get a lot of backlash. I mean, you still get like, a lot of that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chris Yata is no longer rapping like the hustler we knew him to be. Now he's doing more of the singing, commercializing your flow and your style. What um, do you have to say about that? The thing is, if people, the actual people who followed me right from the beginning know I switch every time. Mm. I, I don't just do rap, rap, rap. Sometimes okay. I express myself through melodies. Yeah. So the people who've been following me know that this is what I've been Because people blame a lot of these award schemes for killing our rap talents. They tell you that if your favorite rapper is being nominated for a high life category, what does that tell you? It doesn't say versatility in any way, but it shows that, well, he's trying to fit in and make that money. Is it about money for you, Gracie? Oh, no. no. It's about inspiring people right. and like, telling my story. Okay. Yeah, All right. So, well, well, some of your songs are actually giving you numbers. I mean, across Africa. In fact, catch on BT. We've not meant that one. Yeah. And so, yeah, people tell you that Chrissy, Chrissy's got these uh, uh, numbers. Well, which song, which of your songs would you say has been your most successful hit song commercially? Digital downloads and all the sales. I'll say, don't keep me waiting. Don't You're keep kidding. me waiting. Yeah. Because it has the highest views, number of views on YouTube. Let's do numbers. Let's yeah, do numbers. Yeah. It has like t two million. Yeah. Me. But Grindr broke me into the scene. Okay. Grindr brought me into the scene and made people notice me. You but make say, money off that. What was the biggest paycheck you received with your songs? Um, for now, it's just it's just like online. I yeah, online is where yet. the money is now. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so how but much? I'm getting streams. I can't, I can't stay. No, let's do range. Don't worry. Oh, to nah. inspire some, you inspire people. Come on, Quincy. Let's do this. A Friday, you inspire people. Yeah, let's get into for that. Charlie, keep on working. Yeah, keep on working on your craft, Charlie. Go be for you. <laughs> I like that. Okay, so he's out with his EP. He's also been nominated for the VGMAs. What are your chances, though? Um, we've been nominated in five categories. Yeah. Uh, I just hope the people keep voting, Charlie. Which wait, one wait, are you wait, sure? Make a share. Make a share the code. Um, <laughs> it's N seven to one seven six seven I three to one seven six seven P seven to one seven six seven B eleven to one seven six seven and R two to one seven six seven. So if you haven't voted, make sure you vote. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay. So now uh, I've got a message on uh, an issue he wants you to clarify, yeah. uh, which uh, uh, includes Reese Official. It says that this handle says he designed your cover arts for yeah. your album or your EP, yeah. and he didn't get that recognition, that credit. He felt yeah. his creativity was taken advantage of by you and your team. Yeah. Can you clarify that? Um. Well, it's it's a misunderstanding and miscommunication. Like when pride and ego comes in, like on whose side? And miscommunication. On whose side? On both of our sides. Yeah. So I think like that would be. So are you resolving this? Yeah. yeah oh. Okay. So you're in touch with the young. Yeah. Guy. yeah All right. Yeah. That's a good one. Okay. So he's got another jam we want to show you guys about. But hold on. Remember the Mother's Day is coming this very Sunday and we want to make sure we wow you, our lucky viewers. So 10 of you would have the opportunity to go dine with your mother. Uh, so keep sending those messages on WhatsApp. We'll wrap up with your names. Okay, Let's get into our message board and see what you guys are setting for our Mother's Day promo. Now remember, uh, we're giving you guys an opportunity to smile and dine with your mothers this Mother's Day. Now this one says, when I, uh, when I look at your picture, I remember when you used to talk to us about uh, who you wanted us to be in future. I remember when you used to shout at me, sweet mother, now you know Dea. Okay, so I'll tell you about the rest of the journey life I had when we meet again in paradise. So that's had to do with you losing your mom and keeping her advice and growing up to become the strong person you are. You forgot to add your name though. Uh, there's another one here that says, whatever I am today is because of my mom. She, seemed, uh, she means the world to me and my brother. She sacrificed a meal sometimes for us and she gets something else we wanted. Uh, and when she gets something else we wanted, that as well as okay i don't really get this part but yes you're super proud of your mom that's the message in there so this is coming from wofu subwatin prince happy mother's day to my lovely mother and uh this one says my, my mom was a hero she sold her clothes just to uh 
just for us to have something to eat and my mom wrapped herself uh, with thong of uh, with torn clothes okay for such a long time and i'm sure you lost your mom too aside all these sacrifices oh so sorry so sad about that but please do add your names uh, uh to the messages so we can send uh, your message to you and your probably your code for you to come dine with your mom uh, now this is the thing for those of you who lost your mothers uh we still have a way of uh, having you represent or bring someone who represents a mother figure or plays a motherly role in your life okay so uh that's about it crazy author is still here and he's been touring the world with uh, his crafts and we must say this i'm we are super proud of you i remember the very first time we met was when uh sa Kodier and angel introduced yeah, you yeah, to yeah, me yeah, yeah, yeah. uh in a hotel right. somewhere in Accra. So giovanni yeah, yeah like giovanni watch out for this guy and i'm like hey, my casa my bro you know but yeah actually you've proven that really really you really define rap music yeah, so. all right so tell us about your tours though real quick mm. um so I've, I've done like a media tour outside the country yeah. um we went to tim westwood um yeah we saw that freestyle. And we did a freestyle fire, which is out. thank yeah, you so much it was fire. then i was at ebro Ooh. beats one official yeah that's, that's so we had an interview just uh, for this for this project yeah, yeah, yeah. the ep yeah okay. so charlie the ep is out mm -hmm. make sure you check it out live from Kumakom volume two home run it's on all platforms That's so right. make sure you check it out the yeah. man is smiling because he's talking about <laughs> platforms and he's looking at the check He's looking at the clicks, the streams. But yeah, that's how you keep your favorite at the top forever. You know, you support their music, their crafts every time and any chance you get. And also talking about your label, though, you have a lot of soldiers you're pulling along with you. You're not selfish at all, my guy. So you have the Grand Old Charlie movement, yeah, everybody's yeah, on yeah. there. You have like 15 different rappers on there. You know, <laughs> the last yeah. time I checked, it was 14. I'm sure by now it's 15. Yeah. Tell us about but it. But Ground Up is actually a platform. Okay. Yeah, it's a platform for upcoming okay. talent and talented people. Right. So we just support talent. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's not like yeah. you sign them all? No. Nah, oh, okay. Nah. I get they it just now. support them. And like so like uh, Kwesi, Kwamina MP. Kwamina MP, uh, Switch, Kofi Mole, yeah. um, they on the track. Um, Sweater. riders, so many, so many, too many of arts. them actually. Yeah. Crazy slay, like, yeah, they just put they just support. Like, oh, I like arts. that, I yeah. like that. All right, so we've got to be checking out of here. We want to connect with uh, our colleague, uh, Johnny Hughes, who is in Medina right now for Community Connect. Uh, but before we do that, though, Mother's Day, what's the plan? Who is he? Um, Charlie, thanks to all mothers, thanks mm -hmm. to all mothers, like without you, we don't know where we'll be today. Okay. Um, shouts to my mom, Charlie, sister Vivian, and sister shouts Vivian. to my grandma, Beatrice and Auntie. Dix. What are you doing for mother? Or mother? Oh, we go see, we go see what we go. You want to surprise them? Oh, yeah, Charlie, the yeah. only surprise we Momo are to. Charlie, yeah. thank you so much, thank you so thank much you for so coming much on for the show today, thank so and thanks to all of you for being a part of the show this Friday. Felt like my very first day at work. Uh, thanks to the production crew, of course, the director, uh, Coco and our producer Danny and the entire team out there the PAs everyone make sure you continue to follow us on social media enjoy the best of programming right here on TV3